Lesson 3. Useful tools that can help us with directing our intention and the practice of mindfulness. Let's start with the breath. This is my favorite because we don't really need anything else to do it. Your breath is something that's always there. And that's the most important part. It's always going, whether you're thinking about it or not. So when you bring your attention to your breath, then your attention also comes to the present moment. Another important part about the breath is that when we're not present and we become stressed, our breath becomes shallow. And a shallow breath deprives us of oxygen, that's nourishment for our brains, energy for our brains, and also the rest of your body. Here's how I like to put it. Breathing is the most important thing that you can do, consciously. It's the most important thing you can think about doing. So unless you're in an emergency situation, there is nothing more important than breathing. Many people forget to breathe in without very poor breathing mechanics. The proper breath looks like this. From the abdomen. So the diaphragm, the diaphragmatic muscles down here, pull down and expand below the ribs so that we can have space for air in the lungs. And then as we exhale, that air squeezes out of the lungs. We inhale, the lungs fill. Like a balloon. That's how the natural breath looks like. That's how babies breathe. When you look at a child, a baby on their back breathing. They're breathing from their belly as opposed to the stressed, the stressed out breath. It looks something like this. But our, our ribs don't expand that much, which is why you don't get as much oxygen and that's why it's not a good way to breathe. So if everyone's concerned about the quality of their water or the quality of their food and their diet, but you're not thinking about your breath, where does that leave you? You can survive weeks and days without food or water, respectively, but you can't survive very long without breathing, without oxygen. That makes the breath the number one thing to come back to whenever you need to redirect your intention. If you're ever feeling lost and you need to come back into balance, come back into focus. I recommend closing your eyes, inhaling through the nostrils for three seconds, and exhaling for three seconds. And if that's easy for you, try inhaling for three seconds and exhaling for six seconds. Double the inhale. This is a good exercise to help slow down the brain and help us to reconvene. When you do this, you might notice that an idea might come in your head, or the answer to a question you had, or anything you were unsure about might seem obvious. And that's the power of relaxing. And like I said, all answers become clear when we're honest with ourselves, when we ask the right questions. But we have to be listening. We have to let go of the distractions, let go of the noise and the breath helps us do that by bringing us to the present moment. And speaking of clearing the noise, sound is another amazing tool that I like to use. Sound creates all kinds of interactions in the brain and helps to bridge certain gaps. Sound can help to slow down the brain and reduce mind chatter, reduce stress, anxiety. There are things that get in the way of directing our intention and that can scatter us in many different ways rather than helping us to focus, focus our energies on our goals and our intentions. And so when we use sounds intentionally, we can use them to improve our health and improve our mental state so that we're able to direct our energies. Again, clearing the noise. One of my favorite types of sounds to use for this are Himalayan singing bowls. Himalayan singing bowls are related to the bell. It 
and they produce a very healing, a very harmonious, and when I say that, I mean organized. They are very organized, structured tones. Simply hearing these sounds help our brain to slow down and have the effects that I mentioned. You can also use meditations, pre-recorded soundtracks, other instruments. Sounds of nature are amazing for being present. There's certain natural interactions in the brain there that uh, it's very primal. Which is also why certain instruments like bells or singing bowls. Another one that I like to use is the didgeridoo. These instruments have certain primal qualities that our brain can relate to on an instinctual, on a natural level. And the last tool I recommend is the pairing of processes. And by this I mean doing something that you don't like, that you're not as excited about, at the same time as or before or after you do something that you enjoy or something that you're good at. This makes it easier for your brain to make certain connections and it makes it easier for you to get into a routine of doing that and associating the thing that you like with the thing that you don't like. This can make it so that even if there's something that's difficult to practice or something that you don't like to practice, you can still find joy in it. You can still get the benefits from it and not have to think about it too much. Not be too invested in it energetically. One example could be if it's difficult for you to stretch in the morning, you can do it in between some things that are easier, like let's say stretching after you brush your teeth and before you shower. That way it's packed in your morning routine and it's and it's in the middle of, of two things that are relatively easy to do. That way it becomes difficult to avoid and easier to practice. Another example is combining something passive with something active. So for me, that this would be driving in rush hour traffic while listening to music or an audiobook. So I can listen to music, I can, I can listen to a book, and learn and not feel so bad about being in traffic and not focus on the unenjoyable aspects. I can relax a little bit more and my intention is a little more gathered. So this way, even if I don't enjoy being stuck in traffic, I can still enjoy and even benefit from the overall experience. That's all for our Power of Intention course. This was more of a brief introduction to all these topics so that we can start to live a more intentional and fulfilling life. I hope you enjoyed it and you'll use some of the things you learned in this course, and I hope to see you again in a future course. Be well, everyone.